You guys ready for a redemption art? We have some art supply redemption for you guys today. All right, all right, I've heard you guys. Several of you guys were claiming that I did not give the Kuratake Art Nouveau a fair shake. Some of you guys argued that I should be approaching this more from an Art Nouveau perspective than from an Edigami perspective, despite these being Gensai paints designed for Edigami. I gotcha, okay. So what I think is meant by Art Nouveau is not what I was thinking of as Art Nouveau, like Alphonse Muha. It's more like Japanese Nihonga Art Nouveau. So I have this inked illustration of some morning glories and I'm gonna share the line art over on my Patreon if you wanna paint along with me or if you just wanna support what I'm doing over here. And I figure I can put these to a test that might be more acceptable to some of you guys. And you know what? Maybe I'm wrong because I was re-swatching these recently when I was doing the Turner stuff and I kind of love the colors so maybe this is going to be a better way of handling them I am going to be working from reference I am going to include the reference down in the description if you guys are curious um, and while I change some things from the reference and the colors are definitely going to be different from the reference I did you know get the general gist of what morning glories look like and how to kind of assemble them on here from that so Maybe we're going to see some art supply redemption today. Maybe we won't. Maybe I'll see some redemption as a reviewer in the eyes of some of you guys. Maybe you guys left your comment and you're never ever coming back. And this is just basically me indulging myself. I don't know. But I figure we enjoy painting flowers here on the channel. And we enjoy Gansai style watercolors here on the channel. And we enjoy using watercolors for things they're not meant to do here on the channel. So why not do that with you guys today? I'm going to start by using some artist masking tape to tape the back of the bookmark down. Now I've done edge to edge inking on this bookmark, so I can't do a tape or I don't want to do a tape border around it. So we're hoping that the tape on the back will hold it down sufficiently. I'm attaching it to a piece of chipboard and I have the Art Nouveau palette laid out. So I'm starting by using this really light blue color to add a little bit of shading to our morning glories at the base while they're kind of going into the darker area of the foliage. So this is me adding some shading to the white. I'm also using that super light pink to kind of add in some color to the throats. And then while it's still wet, I dabbed in some yellow and allowed that to diffuse. And I am adding in some of that lighter blue. And I am working with some really thin mixes here. And I am mixing using a ceramic palette to ensure that I'm not just globbing the paint down. And I'm going to work kind of flower by flower to establish it. It's kind of based on the photo that you guys see here, but it's not like 100% based on it. I'm changing up some of the colors and I'm changing up some of the placement. Also, this palette just doesn't have those kind of vibrant colors. They're more muted colors, so I'm kind of adjusting that as well. For this bookmark, I'm going to rely really heavily in the beginning on really light washes of color and diffusing things out wet into wet. So we're going to have some really thin mixes going on to start with. And I think that was kind of my problem with the edigame is I was just... I was doing some really wet washes, but the paper itself wasn't really suited to it perhaps and then I was going in too thickly trying to clean it up. So we're gonna take kind of a more measured approach here and we're going to work with a little bit more nuance. I'm also going to allow for a lot of wet into wet. So we're working with a cotton rag paper that should hopefully hold onto those pigments for me, but also hold onto that water so that we can really get some nice diffusion. So with larger spaces to work with and on a cotton rag paper, I like how these handle a bit better. In some areas, not so much. We're about to get to this dark red flower that I feel like I really kind of struggled with. The color just wasn't quite right for it and I ended up having to kind of repaint it. But in terms of working with these kind of soft, gentle pastels with lots of wet into wet, those work really well and they're very pretty. I do think 
with the addition of the other Gensai Tombi palettes, like if you were using those as well, this is a really nice addition. But I don't, I'm not as sold as some people are about this palette being like the end all be all palette. This is the red flower that I was just talking about that I feel like I really kind of struggled with. Now, perhaps the mistakes that I made with this flower are really more on me and how I chose to add in the water to kind of bloom it back and then add in some red to kind of shift the, the color. Maybe that's more on me than on the paints themselves. I feel like a more simple watercolor illustration like this one really suits these paints. They seem to work really well for these larger areas that really allow the color to develop and really allow the color to kind of bloom and move without it getting too muddy too quickly. And maybe that was also kind of the problem with the edigame. But I do think you should keep in mind that these are very pastel and they're going to muddy your water and they're going to muddy your line art. And they're not really meant for a lot of layering. And that's true for Gensai in general. So you may need to re your piece if you want a really nice crispy line arm. The color selection is really pretty and kind of muted with a lovely gentle old-fashioned feel. It's a shame that they didn't work out for Edagame for me because I still feel like this color palette is so perfect for what Edagame is, but it's also lovely for little watercolor bookmarks like the one we're painting here. These work well diluted or in mass tone and you can build color up and these diffuse out into water really prettily for the most part. But I wouldn't recommend doing much color mixing, although glazing does seem to work quite well. If you can do a wet blend out, it's really pretty. So now that I've got the flowers kind of blocked in and we've used a really nice bright yellow for the leaves and for the buds, I'm using a nice darker cool bluish green to start filling in the background so that we can create some contrast and make those flowers pop forward a little bit more. So we did our flowers first and I kind of thought about what the color palette looked like and I kind of thought about what it needed and then I chose my background colors after that. I allowed that to dry and I'm doing another layer of that light blue at the throats of the flowers. I really want to make sure that I develop the colors and that's going to mean doing some additional layers. This also gives me a chance as you see with this reddish flower we're actually adding kind of a mauve purple on top of it now to adjust some of the colors and to kind of make them more what I originally had in mind. This is also a good opportunity to go in and kind of add some details that got a little bit lost when I was doing all the wet and to wet, like some of the striping at the throat or adding in some of the darker colors and kind of blending them out softly. I was really surprised by how well these handle wet and to wet, how well these handle blending out, how well these handle washes and how well these handle glazes and layering because I sincerely did not think they were going to handle those techniques particularly well. And I, was worried that I really liked the line art for this and I was worried that it could turn into a muddy mess if I didn't really handle it. So these did end up surprising me and they did end up earning their art supply redemption. Although I still have a lot of the same old caveats that I have. I can definitely see why people like these watercolors and why they were championing for these watercolors. I just hesitate to recommend them for their intended use. And I do tend to get a little bit stuck on that, but I do love how you can build up the color, especially on a cotton rag paper like this, how you can add in the layers, how you can do glazes like we're doing here on the leaves by adding in a really nice green on top of our yellow to get a much fresher sort of green than we would have had access to otherwise. I do think perhaps with a few good basic primary colors. And Edagame does sell the little six sets with just their, their most basic Edagame colors. I do think that might be just what you need. And now I have a bunch of the different Kurotake Gensai Tombi sets. I have the pastel set, I have the 24 set, I have this. So I, I might have like a bit of a problem with amassing a uh, Kurotake Gensai Tombi collection. So you may want to take my advice with a grain of salt, but I would say look at what I'm doing and use that to kind of judge 
because honestly, for this illustration, they handled very straightforwardly. There were no weird surprises. There were no weird granulation. There was no weird mistakes or struggling with handling. I do think these benefit from the cotton rag and I do think they benefit with having a ceramic mixing palette. So to kind of further work our background, I'm adding a dark green to add shade to some of the leaves, leaving like kind of doing a bleed back with a little bit of clean water to kind of push the color back in some areas so that lighter green does still show through, but it's not quite so intense. And with watercolor, keep in mind that your colors are gonna dry lighter than they go down when they're still wet. So it may look a little darker than you'd like, it is going to dry a little bit lighter. But my goal with this was to build in enough contrast and enough saturation that our flowers really pop from the background. So while that's still wet, I'm still going in with a darker, more bluish green um, and adding that underneath the flowers, anywhere where the flowers might cast shadows onto the leaves, just to kind of create that diffused shading to it. For the negative space in the background, I'm going in with a darker, much more bluish green color. Like there might be just a little hint of green. And I'm doing that same sort of bleed out technique where I mostly fill the area. And then I go in with clean water and allow it to push it, particularly along the edges of the postcard, just for some visual interest, just so that it didn't get too dark. And just to kind of see how it would handle and how it would take that technique. Now, of course, the tape is not doing the best job holding the paper down. That is not the watercolor's fault. I am using a lot of water with this. I am doing a lot of glazing with this. I did like that these dried fairly quickly. They're not a paint that just seems to like linger on the paper forever and not want to dry. Um, I do have to point out that if you are vegan or vegetarian, these might not be the best fit for you because I know in the past Kurataki has claimed to have vegan uh, binder, but then it was revealed that it was still an animal based glue. They may have changed their formulation, but that is something you may wish to look into if this is an issue for you. Traditional Gensai is made with Nikuma, which is an animal hide glue. So in general, traditional Gensai would not be such the best fit for my vegetarian and vegan friends. But I know that a lot of people are very concerned about it. And I did think that it was worth bringing to y'all's attention. Now, one of the plus sides with this animal high glue is that once it's dried, you can layer on top of it and it's not going to reactivate and it's not going to lift up. So it actually works quite well for really thin glazes to adjust the color. But it, you know, it does also still contain animal byproducts. So once it dried, I did want to clean up that line art a little bit since it got a little bit muddy with the opacity of these watercolors. So I'm re-inking it a bit with a Sakura Pigma FB. Now I'll grant you guys this. Y'all were right and I was wrong. I sold this palette short. I don't think it's all that in a bag of chips. Some YouTubers are touting it to be, but I also think there's a lot of potential for fun with this palette. So before we kind of say goodbye, I want to thank you guys for reaching out to me in the comments. And even though I was initially very resistant <laughs> to what some of you guys were saying, it really did encourage me to give these a second look and to give them a second try and to rethink my approach. I do stand by a lot of what I said in the initial review, but I want to put like a big asterisk because I do think they have a place and I do think they're really nice for this kind of larger inked watercolor art that doesn't have a lot of small tiny details that might get clogged down with granulation and they work really well on a cotton rag watercolor paper. So I do like these watercolors. I do think they're fun and I look forward to getting to play around with them again in the future in a capacity like this rather than trying to do edigame postcards with them. glad that I decided to retest, do a different painting, use a different paper with the Kuratake Gensai Tambi Art Nouveau watercolors because I actually like these a lot on a cotton rag paper. Not for edigame and honestly there's I was not wrong to try and test them out on edigame but 
definitely better and handles better, easier to use, prettier blend techniques than, I mean, if I'm using a cotton rag paper. Now, that said, this is not an all-inclusive palette, right? You're going to want to have some other colors handy. There's definitely some limitations to what these paints are going to do. You're only going to be able to get things so dark. You're only going to be able to mix some colors. And most of these colors have a lot of PW6 added to them. So they're going to be kind of opaque. They're going to obscure your line art. So if you're looking for more translucent colors, you may want to use a different Kuratake Gensai Tombi palette. So I would not say like this is like the end all be all palette, but I do kind of amend what I said earlier. And I think this is a great addition if you already enjoy Gensai Tombi and you like to use it on not edigame paper. I think you'll really like this palette and I can kind of see why people were raving about it. Thank you guys so much for joining me again. I am so glad we finally got some Art Supply Redemption for the Art Nouveau palette. Uh, I feel a little like, I feel like I got some redemption for myself as well because you're right, originally I did not like this palette. I thought it was overhyped. And I do think as an edigame palette, it's not really what I'm looking for. There are better palettes on the market for edigame. However, when used on a cotton rag paper, that's when it starts to shine and that's when I had fun with it. I really enjoyed painting these morning glories with you guys. I'm going to share the reference down in the description below. It is not my photo reference. I found it online. So if you want to paint your own, you guys will have that reference available to you if you guys are interested. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed painting this. I enjoyed getting some redemption and I enjoyed getting to see what this palette truly has to offer. Sincerely, thank you to all of you who encouraged me to give it another look, to give it another try, to try a different way, because it encouraged me and inspired me to do just that. So thank you guys for that as well. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If there are any other products that I reviewed that you guys feel like I didn't give a fair shake and you know the material that I should be using, like. Like in this instance, where it doesn't really handle on the paper it's designed to work on. However, on cotton rag, it does handle quite well. That kind of situation. If you know of any art supplies that I maybe just missed the mark on, let me know down on the, in the comments below. And I would be interested in giving them another shot and giving them a chance at art supply redemption. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys again really soon with another art supply review tutorial or maybe a second try at being a recommended art supply. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you soon. Bye guys.